I'm going to start now by starting this up and showing you what happens with the uh, treadmill motor. The treadmill motor, as you were going to use it in the house, you have to turn it up to get it to start and then you turn it down to the speed that you want it to be at and then get on it. So here we have to hold the drive motor still because if we don't, we just turn it on. That sudden kick in energy, the whole thing goes flying and everything comes off the uh, line. So I trial and error, we've learned that this is the best way to get it started. So here we go. In here, the motor came up very fast and we're just gonna turn the speed control down until it's barely moving. And when we get down to uh, the right revolution here, which I can see because I've got the drive pulley taped with blue painter's tape, I, just, I can just let go of the drive wheel and then adjust the motor down to the desired speed. Because I just want everything to just crawl, not look like it's zipping through the air like some of the stuff that I've seen on the web for Axworthy Ghost where guys are using in, uh, horse and a half or horse motors and the things are just flying, whipping around corners. It, it doesn't look realistic. So here we go. On the inside of the bottom drive motor that the paracord is going through, this is a bicycle uh, inner tube that I cut in half. And then I stapled it to the pieces of 4x4 pressure treated lumber that I cut to use as a spacer to attach the two drive wheels together. The rubber inner tube, I cut it and then I used another piece of uh, paracord and then kind of created a lasso and then tied it tight, pulled on it tight and that allowed the rubber inner tube to form to the bicycle rim and then I just wrapped the paracord around a couple of more times and then tied it off up here. And then the paracord just comes around it. It's got something really nice to bite onto in combination with the paracord and the rubber bicycle tire inner tube and works very smoothly. Now what I did when I when I finally joined the two pieces of paracord together what I did is I I took a a nail and first of all I cut the paracord to the length that I wanted and then I melted both ends of the paracord to seal them together so they wouldn't fray. And then behind each sealed end, I took a nail and drove it through the paracord, making a hole through it, and then took the zip tie and put it through the hole in the paracord, and, it, and then I did the same thing to the other end of the paracord behind the melted spot, and then uh, zip tied it together. Through trial and error, I discovered that I was using two zip ties and the problem is, is that you should use um, the medium strength zip tie not the very smallest zip tie that comes in a zip tie package that you get at Home Depot or Lowe's but uh, the one up from the smallest size and just use one zip tie and And then you want to make sure that the, um, the curved end of the zip tie is on the leading edge going through all the pulley systems. If you have the, the end of the zip tie that runs through each other that makes the clicking sound, if that's first going through the dry pulleys, you have more of a likelihood that 
the uh, zip tie is going to cause it to derail and it's going to come off of your pulleys. But if you turn it around and you put the bend, the bended end of the zip tie in the leading end of the um, treadmill, I mean uh, through the pulleys, it works a lot better. And we got one coming up right here. And I'm going to stop this to show you what I'm talking about. Now, here is uh, the zip tie end that the, that the zip tie runs through each other. And this is the bent end. And, and as you can see, if it'll focus, I just made a hole right behind the melted end of the paracord and then ran the zip tie through it. And so this is the bent end of the zip tie that runs through the pulley first. And as you can see, it goes right through and my problem was is I was using a zip tie that was too big and so this end was over here and I was using two of them so I had a I had a an end here and I had an end here just like this here so the tie was too big so when it went to the pulley system it would come right off and I that really was a, a huge problem and a real pain so I finally discovered under um, much irritation that the best way to do it is to put the zip tie through and bend it on this end and then run it through and attach it on this end. Again, this is the end that clicks and it goes right through. 